a small message from me before we kick off with today's video. iDriver Classic is proud to be sponsored and insured by Adrian Flux. If you haven't heard of Adrian Flux before, they're the UK's leading specialist motor insurance broker, covering everything from classic and vintage cars right through to heavily modified sports cars. So whether you're in a Morris Marina, a 90s retro runabout, or something with a bit more oomph under the bonnet, give them a call for your next policy. I've popped a link to their site in the description box below. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm back in something you weren't expecting. It's this fantastic green goddess. Now I got an email from Andy a few months ago and he said, I've got a fantastic vehicle that I think you would really like. It's not like anything else you've done. And I thought, go on then, what is it? I'm always game for a laugh. And anyway, a picture of the green goddess came through and I thought I'd seen one on Ian's video. So if you watch Hub Night, you've probably seen Ian's video of trying to get a green goddess going. Um, it's one from quite a long time ago and ever since then I've wanted to see one in the flesh so when I got offered this opportunity today I thought I'd be absolutely bonkers to miss out on it so without further delay I'm going to kick off show you around the outside and uh, I'm going to talk you through what we've got Although many know this vehicle as the Green Goddess, it's officially known as the Bedford RLHZ self-propelled emergency pump it was introduced in the 50s in Great Britain to replace the pumps which had been used during the war by the Auxiliary Fire Service. The AFS was established in 1938 and their role was to supplement the local authority provisions for firefighting in readiness for the Second World War. Whilst this was absorbed in the 40s, with the service nationalised in the late 40s, the AFS were reinstated because of the threat of the Cold War. To prepare for the threat of this potential war, wartime fire engines were initially put back into service before the Green Goddess was introduced in the 50s. Now people might think this is a little bit silly looking back, especially if you're my age, but at the time, because the Second World War was so fresh in everybody's minds, the threat of the Cold War was a very real thing. And many people think that due to the connection to the Cold War and the green paint, that these green goddesses fell under the control of the army. But the green goddess fleet actually fell under the home office and they were only painted green to ensure there was no confusion between the normal vehicles in the fire service and these. And as part of their role in potentially combating the fallout of the Cold War, the fleet of 2,000 green goddesses would, in theory, maybe in part, maybe altogether, link up to provide clean water to whichever area had been under attack. We would pump clean, safe water in and it would help to combat fire or contamination. So they were looking at all the different eventualities. The vehicles had the ability to pump nearly 5,000 litres per minute, more than enough to make a decent contribution in any crisis. The speed on these wasn't as slow as you may imagine and they you could expect to comfortably cruise around 45 with a top speed of 65 miles per hour. I'll tell you about the MPG when we go for a drive because that will make you wince. Now compared to fire engines of today they offer considerably less but that's what we expect. They had no radio, no cutting equipment, a single ladder and no power steering. They carried a maximum of 1,800 litres in the 4x2 form, although unlike modern engines there were capacity for four-wheel drive. Thankfully, the Cold War never materialised into a disaster zone fallout in the UK, so the Green Goddesses settled into a more usual life of supporting local fire services in the event of major incidents. And if you remember these being on telly in recent times, they did step into support with fire strikes. So they got brought in in the late 70s, I think 1977, and in the early 2000s. So their last use officially was the 2002-2003 fire dispute. After 9-11, a new law came into force, which meant that the fire and rescue authorities had to make their vehicles available in the event of future strikes. And with that and a few other developments, the government saw that, well, they thought that the Green Goddesses really were surplus to requirement, so they sold off the remaining stock. Now, whilst we have this example here today, and it seems 
very usual that it's just on somebody's driveway, many ended up as far away as Africa to begin life abroad as a fire engine. Now, due to being well maintained throughout their life in service, so they got annual tests, etc., and of course they weren't massively used whilst owned by the Home Office, the remaining green goddesses at point of sale were in remarkably good shape compared to their 50s car counterparts. And although Andy has done a fair bit of work on this one to bring it back looking smart, many at the time of sale looked just as good as this one and perhaps even better. Now before I introduce the owner, let me tell you what's in these numbered lockers. You've probably spotted them as we've walked round, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of what's in each one and then we're going to catch up with Andy. In the first locker here we have got the CCFW pump, so I'll just show you that there. In the second one we've got the branch pipe type A, the hand control branch, dividing breaching, branch diffuser, spanner box, foam branch pipe and pickup tube, suction collecting head, nozzles and nozzle spanner, hose sling and wrench universal suction. So quite a bit in this one. In here we've got the delivery hose and the canvas tarp. And in number four we have got the bucket and the delivery hose. So again, not too much in here. In this one we've got a fair bit. So we've got the axe, the shovel, the crowbar, the hydrant, the key bar, pick head, pick helve, saw in the case, spade, sledgehammer, cropper bolt and the stand pipe. Feels like a game show revealing all of these. So in number six, we've got the hose ramp, the ropes and the salvage sheet. And coming into number seven, we've got the delivery hose, the chimney canes and the canvas. And in number eight, we've got the adapter, the canvas, the suction collecting heads, the hearth kit, the chimney hose and the nozzle. And then in number nine, We've got the strainers, the suction baskets, the sleeve canvases, the 5 gallon water container and the 4.5 gallon petrol container. So let me talk you through what we've got inside here. So over here we've got a glove box. Again, something I wasn't expecting to be in here. And uh, we've got this. So this handle here operates our beacon. I'm going to show you where the switch is for the beacon later on. And then you've probably noticed that these windscreen wipers are on different switches. So I'm just going to switch this on and show you. I thought this was really interesting. This is like something Hubnut would really like, actually. So uh, if you watch, it doesn't actually park itself. It hasn't got self park on, so it just parks wherever you leave it. And it's exactly the same as well on the passenger side. So I'd assume that whoever is operating the vehicle with me is going to be sitting there and is going to be operating that as well because there's no way that I can reach across to there and drive at the same time but look at the size of this window. Now whilst it's very clever with these uh, single speed uh, wipers that operate by uh, individually the one thing that I did find slightly hilarious was this watch. So that is your air conditioning but I tell you what I would not fancy my chances of that not pinging back at me and then down here bad news for uh, any of us taking this out in winter this here is your only source of heat it seems to be some sort of bakelite shield with a bit of wire round wound into it so uh whilst the window will be defrosted i think the rest of us will be uh, still quite frozen by the time we get to our destination coming down into the middle i thought i'd show you a few nice little bits and pieces so I'm all for all the lovely original detailing, so that's very nice there. This is our choke, and then if you're wondering what this is, this lifts up to reveal our 5 litre straight 6 engine, which Andy actually rebuilt himself, which I thought was um, very clever actually. This is the interesting thing about taking vehicles out sometimes. People will mention very casually what they've done, and you're like, that's quite a big deal. Because I think when he bought it, I think the head gasket had gone. 
Now, whilst we've got an awful lot going on, it still retains that lovely simplicity of 50s and 60s vehicles. And coming down in front of us, everything's very compact. So we've got two dials here. To our left, we've got our speedo. It goes up to 65, which is the top speed of this vehicle. Although I have been told that we want to be cruising at around 45 is where it sits comfortably. And if you're wondering about MPG, I'll tell you about that when we go for a drive because it's ridiculous. Now over to the right hand side, we have got our fuel gauge to top and our water temperature gauge there to the bottom. And in the middle, so you can see we've got the key here and around that we've got our lights. So uh, if you see, we've got side and headlight. And then for main beam, it's down on the floor and it's just a little button. So if you've driven anything older, like Morris Minor or I think A35s have them as well, it's all down on the floor with this one. Coming over to our right hand side, you'll see here we've got this Lucas switch. So this is for our indicators. Selection of lights here. So we've got our reverse, our fog. We've got our beacon, which we'd already talked about up there. And then we've got possibly my favourite thing in here, the two-tone horn. So I'm uh, going to sound that for you now. And then coming up here, you'll see this panel box. Now this, for me, is really cute. I love little details like this. So this is actually stamped with the royal emblem on so if you see up there and these switches here are for the lockers that we looked at around the outside they've all got I'm, i zoomed in to show you but they've got all those little lights inside so that if you were attending a job at night you could see what you're doing and that is literally just up there very satisfying click actually we've got everything set up here for our water pump now I wanted to talk to you about that because a lot of people think that these were fire engines first and foremost but actually of course as I talked about in the walk around they were created as I think they were called utilities or they weren't always seen as vehicles they were seen as a means to pump water very quickly um, so realistically while it's all very well and good that we've got all this driving stuff this is really what this vehicle is supposed to do first and foremost. So let me show you how it works. I'll tell you what, if this isn't familiar to you, it's certainly not familiar to me. So we've got it in high at the moment because that's what we need to have it in for driving. So we come up into neutral there. And what we do is this is our pump. So at the moment it's pumping out, we put that into in, and then we take it and we put it into fourth gear reason we do this is because it takes the drive away from the wheels and puts it into the pump because of course that's what these vehicles were designed to do they were just designed to pump that water so this is all set up as so we're going to get the green goddess started up it is worth noting that it's not just a simple key turn on these so it's one turn of the key and then there's the button down here we'll let you listen to what she sounds like inside and then we'll hop through to the back let you hear what she sounds like from the exhaust and we're then going to take her on a drive which I'm really mildly terrified for so um, we'll get her started up I'm going to give her a little bit of choke because uh, she's not that keen on me we'll start again, this is cool Give her a bit of choke. There we go. And with a health, healthy dose of mild peril, we're going to set off. I am absolutely terrified, but well, if I said I'm going to do a video, let's crack on and get it done. I'm going to take you through the gearbox. So remember, we've got four gears on this. No synchro on first, but the rest have got it on. Thank goodness. Right, let's go.
up into fourth gear. Now as you can probably hear, it's quite noisy inside, but it's not too bad actually. One of the things that's really surprised me about driving this is immediately you feel very comfortable. So the seating position is very comfortable. As you take those bumps and bends, it's not too stressful. I know some of the stuff that we've taken out where it's been a lot of agricultural has just felt quite intense. But this is actually quite enjoyable. Now I did mention that these do have a cruising speed of around 45 miles per hour allegedly, but I'm quite happy doing somewhere between 20 and 25. This is quite scary enough for me. Sorry I'm a bit quiet today, it's just actually quite nice to take something out and experience something really different. Now if you're perhaps wondering what this would be doing MPG wise, when I did a bit of research online it's doing allegedly 8 to 10 miles per gallon but Andy tells me it costs around one pound per mile to run so um, definitely one that you wouldn't want to be taking too far I don't imagine. Now this is where it gets a little bit scary and uh, we get to use some of those mirrors. Too bad. I hope that man in my uh, in my rear view camera doesn't need to go anywhere fast because I tell you what, I'm not going anywhere fast myself. Now you're probably wondering what is this like to steer? Well, I've never steered a ship, but I imagine it's on par with it. It's like the elephant of the vehicle world, so she's slow, she's dependable, and she's a little bit ungainly. But overall, she just makes you smile because driving something like this is probably not something that many of us mere mortals will be doing. But I'll tell you what, it is a right laugh. Now, whilst this has been quite a short test drive for our Driver Classic, and it's definitely not been one of the fastest, I think this is probably one that I'm going to remember for quite some time because it's been quite a good laugh. And in fact, when I turned up, I said to Andy, I said, Gosh, why have you bought, I mean, it's amazing to look at, but why have you bought a green goddess? And he told me about his dad, and he said, you know, it's got sentimental reasons, but he also said it's actually quite fun. Now, when I pulled up today, I don't feel like I fully appreciated just how fun it was, but now I'm behind the drive, the, well, I'm in the driving seat myself, I can see exactly why he's done it. It's good fun, it's a laugh, and you know what, life, if we've learned anything in the last year, life is too short not to have jolly good fun. Now that's it for me today. It's getting louder and louder in here as I pick up the speed. I hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, take care and drive safely.